Alrighty, hello boys, babes, and all of you beans in between. Welcome back to All the Blocks. We are back with another episode of the newest and weirdest block palettes that people are giving me to build with. Now, for those that are new to this, the premise behind this series is people give me anywhere from three to five blocks in a palette to build with. And in that palette, we are tasked to build something that would fit in my personal rules in a two trunk area. You have to have one of the blocks must be capable of making stairs, slabs, or some sort of variant like that. However, in the case of like stone, I can make stone stairs and stone slabs, but I cannot make stone bricks. So with those basic rules, let's talk about my super quick and crazy weird block palette that I got off my most recent video from someone in the comments. This one, unfortunately, gave me six blocks. However, one of the items on that list was not Something I personally will classify as a block and will be an, an ad, 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 addendum, addendum, an add-on, add-on to my rules of things like shulker boxes. That would not be something I would classify as a block and would not be included in the palette for myself to use. So, the block palette I was given was deep slate lapis, blue wool, blue concrete, blue stained glass, and deep slate tiles. Which, honestly, really weird palette. I spent a good 20 minutes looking at it going, what the heck would I even do with that? Mind you, there were some other really good palettes left for me either on my first video or the most recent video again too. Super great ones that I would honestly would love to try and play with later down the road. However, this one stopped me because it felt like an actual challenge to play with on the terms of what the heck do you even do with this? So I took it, built something, and I'm pretty intrigued by it. So let's jump into my world. The big thing that we're going to focus on here is I didn't think I could find a good biome in particular that I wanted it to be in. So we're going to put this right next to my last build, just across the river, closer to this little village that I don't know if it's going to survive being out there. But I felt like right here honestly made a super good spot. I even considered putting it over here by the ocean because of how blue it was. But for some reason, it being by the river and in a plains biome felt like it made more sense than pushing it over this direction. So I'm going to work on getting some nice little terraforming done, make sure the area is nice and spick and span and easy to build in. But this one honestly doesn't require a lot. So we're not going to bother with the time lapse on this, but I'm going to jump right into this and get started. So let's see what happens. So with this build, I definitely ran into a question of how do I create a depth and what am I doing with it? And obviously you got to find a place to sit it and got to find what am I going to even do with this? Because it's a lot of blue. And with that situation, I continued to ask myself, where am I trying to go with this to begin with? Because I've done some more modern style of housing. I've done the weird little almost fairground feeling building just across the river from this. And I've done the weird tree. So with this, I figured this is the time to actually stop and do like a standard house. Why? Because it's a weird palette and it could look super cool in a lot of different design spaces that you could play with. However, I will recognize the material for this is very expensive. Deep slate lapis ore, while not hard to find, does take a bit of time to get. But overall, the like, color and shape was something that I was playing with for a fair amount of time. Now, when I'm building basic houses, when I'm building something you would just live in for a quick little, hey, I'm going to have a village, I'm going to work here. I stand by the rule of don't make it a box. I think I've heard that said by plenty of other builders when they're building with a new like block in an area, don't build in just a box. Put a side shape off of it to make it feel a little bit more wide, feel a little bit more abnormal, a little more enticing to look at, give it some depth. So you don't have to have it be too thick walls, you don't have to have things like that, but by giving it the little module shapes, you are able to unlock a lot more shape and dexterity to the way it's built and the way it's functioning in the area. So with that, I obviously picked a Smaller front box, an even smaller side box that goes off of it, and the bigger back box that is the main space. Now, one of the things I know I didn't do with this was I didn't go ahead and build floors inside. Typically, when I build a house like this, I have pre-designated floors that are assigned to different types of things, but we're going to do that after the fact we get to shape it. So, with this, I then also went ahead and denoted on the outside visually where floors would be if you follow the standard like house structure. However, not requirement with those things. That's why those little tile deep slate pieces are on the side de decorating it, but also creating a depth and breaking up that heavy amount of blue that is the walls. So with this, it flows pretty well. And I think the biggest thing I focused on with it was actually its roofs, which once again, roofs are hard. It's 
it's one of those things that I've always personally struggled with. Like, I do them decently, but roofs are one of those really weird things of it makes or breaks your house. If it's just a straight, nice, completely normal A-line form, that's one thing. That's completely fine. That's a normal thing to do. But if you can add a little bit of a curve to it, add a little depth to it, add a little texture to it, it makes a world of difference in how you perceive your house and how people perceive what's going on with it. So with that, it makes a massive difference for me being able to adapt it, fl fl fluctuate it, fluctuate it, yep, that's the word, and then being able to mold and move to make it so that the windows make sense, make sure that shapes make sense. And with this, like I opted for the top roof to be a double because it's such a big space that one giant A-frame shape would make sense, but also it kind of takes out some of the personality makes it feel a little bit more Victorian by doing this or a little more like expressive in like the old mansions. So that house, honestly, super simple, but also weird little things make the world a difference. Alrighty, so this house is definitely wrapped up for the majority of its part, but let's take a quick look at it. So overall, structure is intact. It's very um, Victorian in style is definitely a good answer for it, but it is much more loose in its structure than typically I would want to do mostly due to it not having an interior flooring or anything like that so let's actually look at that because it's not something i've really done with many of these builds like that one's got stairs in it um the tree had some stuff set up in it but let's look at this interior before we even touch the outside so looking at this you are given a fair ability to do a decent amount of things apparently i don't even need this here um, but you have this massive open space. You have a little entryway that honestly, once again, if you don't want it to be so clumped, you can clear out a fair amount of it without any issue to the exterior structure, which gives you plenty more space to work in here. Now, adjusting this to kind of build, you can use it for just about anything. One of the things that I would personally use it for is to cover up a farm. It is a pretty good size to cover up something like a sugarcane farm or a bamboo farm, something like that would be super easy to stick inside of here or keep it covered. But if you want to use this as your actual home base, there's a couple things that you could do with it. All right, so looking at this, the biggest thing I would say is a dark oak would look nicest with this if we're keeping the darker structure. Now, if you want to turn this into your house, the, up to you how about you go about this. But the first thing I would start with is obviously some sort of storage setup. So given the way that I've done the windows, which is not the permanent final choice, you're obviously able to rearrange windows however you see fit. However, for my personal choices, I would go with something like a chest wall, something like, whoop, oh no, something like this that you could then have several sets of chest running across it, whoop. and then you could easily do something with fences to help give some sort of like designated structure space to it easy enough without making it look too gaudy, I guess is a good word. Um, but you can also put it behind things like trap doors if you don't want people to automatically see it. Oh, apparently I have left this on. How have I managed that? Um... <laughs> that horse outside has got a lot to say about this build. But something like this could easily hide or if you're wanting it to be incorporated to the structure, you could definitely do something like this to help ensure that it is still accessible via your functions. So dark oak slabs, just to make sure they're openable. That gives you this space to work with and still have things to, like you can open and close these, you get a functional storage space, and you still got space above here to do stuff with. Now, obviously easy things to do like that would be then install the entirety of the floor. I like to do things like this because it gives the room a little bit of a trim to it without causing too much effort on the part of doing it. So like you knock out this, you then can do these. So when you look at it, it's all got this consistent trim across the space and then you are able to do things like this. Now, personally, I like to keep wide open spaces in my builds so that it doesn't feel so confined, but I can also respect the use of smaller rooms when you're working on structures similar to this. But for myself, when it comes to things like this, I like to take the tallest space, make that have floors, and then have that section be open and able to be viewed by the rest of the building. So the easiest thing to do with this situation would then be to either use a ladder to traverse up and down these floors, which you could do like right here, 
and have a ladder that comes up and gets off of this floor or gets up at the next floor because you could go ahead and do another floor up here or you just leave this floor as a singular and ooh, actually so here's an easy way you can incorporate ladders without taking up a ton of space downside if you move the trap door it's gonna break your ladder but you can do something like this grab us a ladder and you can quickly climb up it like that downside you open the door your ladder's gonna come off but easy enough fix but it also gives it this smaller like bunker feeling um, honestly you don't have to do the stair across it might make more sense for this to be a slab if you want it to feel more open but the option is up to anyone who chooses to build with it downside i gotta fix that stair so that it has a back to it so that the ladder can go up it but that gives you this you can easily get up here and use this for whatever such as an enchanting table um grab some bookshelves and grab yourself an enchanting table Oop. enchanting table but this gives you an easy space that you can do something like this in and then you could add the dramatics of a enchanting space that would be more whimsical in nature or make it feel like it's a wizard's hut which this gives you i believe the full access to enchanting but that gives you that kind of space and you could still do another line of storage here that holds all the stuff you need for that without it taking up too much space and honestly if you're feeling real fancy you could try and do a chandelier sadly i did build this on an even structure in this direction and an even in this direction so chandeliers are a little harder on that spectrum however you still got this wide open space that you can add more things that are more functional to and it's easy to expand redesign and refunction without much effort so i'm going to do a little bit of terraforming out here to make the building itself look like it belongs more in its environment and i will bring you guys back as soon as that's done so i will admit looking at this for the most part one of the things i really wanted to focus on when it came to incorporating it into its environment was greenery but also that silly horse that kept walking through earlier and making all the noise I felt like it had to be incorporated because honestly this kind of house would make sense to have some sort of horse barn a horse field a horse paddock so i felt like i obviously got to throw in something like that to make sure you know a little guy can have a little place to stay since he's so adamant about talking through the background of my recordings anyway so we very quickly give him a little place to go add some incorporation make sure the floor is textured make sure it looks like something's actually walking around and living in there and overall make it look like life is happening within the bounds of this area Mind you, there's a lot of other ways you can make some texture to this, but I definitely stuck with the hay and the mud because it makes sense for an animal with hooven to pad down and make the um, ground feel like that. And an easy way to fix a lot of that mud is throw hay in. Now, something I really liked with this house was it gave the energy of it would have really tall hedges, specifically like a hedge maze. However, that's not something I could fully do in this sitting so i went with a cute little hedge swirl over here on the side that yeah absolutely someone could walk into and hang out inside of i personally would love to build an entire hedge maze in minecraft but that's not the right now problem but i think this adds a nice texture to it nice detail to it without making it too terribly complicated but moving on past that obviously a lot of greenery makes a lot of sense for this space but one of the big things i really thought would make a lot more sense with the building was trees so once we had a cute little roof decor on, because I felt like it needed something just to spike up the roof quite literally, um, trees made the most sense for me. And I really wanted to go with some sort of crooked spruces because it really felt like it fit the ambiance, the energy, and what it was looking for with that setup. So I went with three of them, one much bigger one off to the side of the house, one smaller one in the front, and another smaller one out by the paddock. And I think those overall did a very good job of displaying life in the area but also it being old and taken care of but not completely managed and manicured and i think overall it did a very good job of making it feel less out in the open mind you there's a lot more i would personally like to do with it now overall this feels much more homey feels much more like someone lives here something happens within this space what that thing is who the heck knows but i like the way it looks i like the way it feels it definitely makes it feel like someone lives here it's not completely drab but it is also not completely perfect and which is why i think it would be all the cooler to have something bigger like this like a bigger hedge maze that covers this whole section back here but that's a little much for something that was like this that i intend to be starter build friendly though the lapis ore does make that a little more difficult but 
Overall, the interior is something you can easily play with, and the exterior is equally not impossible to do, but definitely takes a little bit more work to get done. But I hope everyone enjoyed this. It has been an absolute blast. I hope you all have a lovely, lovely rest of your day, and I will see you all next time. And remember to think outside the block. Bye.